Welcome back to the Poker Vlog. This is episode number 172, and for this one, we're playing high stakes in Las Vegas. There are a ton of all-ins, a lot of just big pots, and uh, crazy situations that I don't normally get into, so this is a fun episode. But before we get started, I have a few announcements to make. The first one is that we're going to Houston August 7th and 8th. So we'll be at the Texas Card House out there. We'll be playing cash on the 7th, and then we'll be playing a tournament on the 8th. And uh, after that, we're going to Austin. We'll be there August 11th and 12th. And then for the first time in a year and a half, we're doing a Las Vegas meetup game at the brand new Resorts World. That's gonna be awesome. That's gonna be August 20th. We just got the green light for that today. So super pumped. And uh, in September, we're going to the Hustler Casino in the Los Angeles area. We'll be there the 11th and 12th of September. So uh, more details in uh, the description box below, but if you're able to make it to any of those locations on those dates, then join Andrew and me for, uh, for some fun times and vlogging and hanging out. All right, let's go ahead and get started. It's a nice and sunny day on the Las Vegas Strip. I'm at Bellagio, ready to play some 1020. There's a list for that game, so I hop into the 510 while I wait. We're in the must move. About 20 minutes into the session, I pick up 7-6 suited in the big blind. Under the gun plus one raises to 40. Middle position player calls, the hijack calls, the button calls. I've got a playable hand and I'm getting a great price. I call for 30 more. We're going five ways to the flop out of position. The dealer puts out jack 10, five, all diamonds. We flop a flush in a multi-way pot. I check to the pre-flop raiser. He checks, that's not good. The middle position player and the hijack check. I really don't want people to see any free cards. The button is a lifesaver. The dude bets 140. I have a big decision. I can either go for the check raise now, or I can call and go for it on the turn if another diamond doesn't come out. There are benefits and risks to doing either. I choose to stay patient. I just flat to set the trap. There's actually no guarantee that I even currently have the best hand. The players behind me fold. It's down to heads up. The turn is the nine of clubs. If we were ahead before, we're still gonna have the lead. I check. Let's see if the button wants to continue firing. He definitely does. He increases the sizing to 350. I have 12 10 total, and the opponent has me covered. Part of me is worried that I might be up against a better flush. If that's the case, that's just bad luck. I'm never folding. It's time to pull the trigger. All in. You said all in. I call. I got a big draw. Oh, once or twice, what do you want to do? Let's go once. All right, gentlemen. We're on the board. Take care of the pot. Opponent shows that he has ace queen offsuit with the ace of diamonds. He has a combo draw, but a straight won't give him the winner. He's drawing to just a few outs. The dealer puts out the seven of hearts to seal the victory for us. The first big hand of the session is a full double up. I haven't had a big win the last few times playing leading into today, so it feels great to take down a huge pot right off the bat. I'm immediately up 1400. The claw picks me up and places me in the main game where I'm dealt ace nine suited in the cutoff. It's my first hand here. I'm the new guy, but I'm not trying to make friends. I raised a 30. The button calls. The big blind calls. We're going three ways to the flop. It's 8-6-6 six, with two clubs. The big blind checks. I bet 40 with my flush draw, two overs, and a backdoor straight draw. No one's intimidated by that. The opponents both call. The turn is the five of clubs. We're making flushes all over the place today. I even pick up the straight flush draw to go along with my monster. The big blind doesn't believe in monsters. He leads into me in the button for 60. Seems like he's trying to get to showdown at a price that he sets, but this isn't his garage sale, this is Bellagio. I raised a 200. The button doesn't like being sandwiched in between us. He folds. The big blind is trying to haggle me down to 195, but I'm not budging. He folds as well. We win this last pot in 510 before we're called for the 1020 game. I rack up to exchange my chips for some higher denomination ones. I'm already up over 1500 on the day. It's nice to have a solid cushion in case things go poorly while I'm playing larger stakes. I add on for 2000 more. I have 5000 total in chips, but I'm only in for 3500. We head up to the high stakes area to play with the big boys. In addition to the blinds, there's also a $20 big blind ante, so there's $50 in the pot before hands are even dealt. There are $100 bomb pots every dealer change, and the winner of those has to pay time for the entire table. It can get expensive if you don't win any of them. I lose a couple before I'm dealt pocket tens in the small blind. The under the gun player straddled for 40. The hijack opens to 120. He's a very good player who's frequently in some of the highest stakes games in the world, including some in Macau. I call for 110 more. The 
big blind calls. The under the gun straddler also calls. We're going four ways to the flop out of position. It's already $500 in the middle. If you wanna see me flop a set, hit the like button on the count of three for some extra run good. Ready? One, two, three. The dealer puts out ace ace 10 with two spades. So many of you hit the like button that we've surpassed the set run good and we've actually made it into full house territory. I check for deception, the big blind and under the gun straddler check. The hijack makes a small bet of 180. I really don't have much to worry about except potentially getting boat over boated. That's rare and that'd be disgusting if that happened. I don't have to be worried about flushes or straights getting there. I wanna keep those draws in if any of my opponents have one. I call, the big blind folds, under the gun has something that you want to stick around with. He calls. It's down to three of us. The turn is the jack of spades. It's an interesting card. I'm losing to a royal flush, quad aces, ace jack, ace ten, and pocket jacks. Sounds like a lot of hands, but there really aren't that many combos of those. What's better is that the flush draws got there, and so did a straight draw. I check. Under the gun checks. The hijack thinks about firing, but he reins it in, and he also checks. I don't think that he's ever going to have me beat. The under the gun straddler was getting a good price pre-flop. He could have a variety of relatively strong, but worse hands than mine. The river is the three of diamonds. It's a complete blank. The under the gun player has 1380 left in his stack. I mostly want to target his chips since the hijack may not have much that he can call a bet with anyway after checking back the previous street. I overbet the pot, putting 1500 in the middle. The under the gun player who's going to have a ton of flush combinations calls for less. The hijack appears to be a little upset as he lays his hand down. It's the moment of truth. I show my boat. It's no good. The opponent has ace three offsuit for a rivered full house. I guess that three of diamonds wasn't a complete blank after all. <laughs> all of the air in my lungs has escaped with my profit on the day. I'm stuck 500 total. And I'm having flashbacks to the previous session of 1020 I played when I fought the king high flush and lost a huge all in pot to a backdoor full house. I keep getting cooler when it matters most. It's tough to make big hands, and when they end up being second best, especially in a game of this size, it hurts badly. I'm not a robot. If you listen closely, you can hear me whisper my frustration. I'm not happy, but you know what always cheers me up? Rolled up aces over kings. For now, pocket aces will have to do. I'm in the hijack in what's currently a seven-handed game. The player on my right limps in for 20. He's probably the least skilled player at the table. It's either him or me. Might be a toss-up. I raised to 80. Under the gun plus one calls, we're heads up. The flop comes, jack seven, six, rainbow. The opponent checks. I'm going for value, I bet 100. That's a reasonable price. The player calls. The turn is the deuce of spades. It's as blank as it gets. It's checked to me. My assumption about this particular player is that he doesn't like to fold much. If he has a jack or a draw of any sort, I don't think that'll let it go, even if he's facing a larger bet. I make it 340. Under the gun plus one, still likes his cards. He calls again. The river might be too good of a card. It's the ace of clubs. We river the nuts. Most of the time, this won't be a good card in terms of helping me get paid if my opponent has something like king jack or queen jack. It doesn't really matter if the opponent has a busted straight draw, and occasionally, it'll be a good card since the ace of spades isn't accounted for. There's some small chance that under the gun plus one called with backdoor spades on the flop, called with a flush draw on the turn, the river top pair, or maybe somehow has two pair. He checks. It's gonna to be tough for me to get called on three streets by something worse than top pair. I target my opponent's strong hands and I try to take advantage of what I perceive as his tendency to call light. I bet 900. there's not much thought from my opponent. Before I even have time to get my chips out there, the opponent puts his cards in the muck. I imagine that he didn't have a pair. We win a decent pot, but we're still down a few hundred altogether on the day. Fortunately for us, we have a chance to get revenge on the man who doubled up through me earlier. Under the gun opens a 60. He's the culprit who boat over boated me. He obviously needs to be punished. The button calls. He's the opponent from the previous hand. I've got 9-8 offsuit in the small blind. Normally this is a fold. Playing these cards can't be good, but I'm pretty sure that these are the only two guys that I can beat at the table. And you've seen the revenge range chart. This is clearly a call based on that. I get in there for 50 more. The way I see it, if you're responsible for putting me in the hole, I can either come after you at the poker table or pretend my name is Randall Stevens and drain your bank accounts. That's a, that's a Shawshank Redemption reference. Remember, the warden puts him in the hole, and he escapes. Never mind. We're going three ways to the flop out of position in a hand that we shouldn't be in. It comes 9-5-3 with two clubs. We've got top pair and some backdoor draws. I check. Under the gun checks. I doubt he even has a pair. The button also checks. He probably doesn't have a pair either. The turn is the king of spades, which could have easily connected with one or both players. 
I check. No check this time from the warden. I mean, the under the gun player, he bets 100. The button calls. This is a weird spot in which I might actually have the best hand. There are quite a few draws out there. Under the gun could just be betting because he knows the turn is good for his range, and I've checked twice. I don't really want to overcall. I put in the check raise to 400. I play sets and two pair hands the same way. I'm mostly repping a set of nine since I can account for half of them. Under the gun folds, you partially get him back, which already makes me 90% happier than I was. The problem is that the guy who I told you probably calls too much is still in the hand. He calls for 300 more. He feels like he has a king and probably won't fold any amount that I bet on the river. Or if I'm lucky, he has some kind of draw that he just can't get away from. The issue with that is that he most likely would have bet a flush draw on the flop and he really shouldn't be calling check raises with straight draws on this board since he won't have many clean outs. The river is the deuce of diamonds. 6-4 and ace-4 get there. Other than that, it's a blank. I check give up. Then the button immediately bets. 1,000. The whole sequence of events strikes me as very odd. I really wasn't expecting a bet from the button after he checked back flop, just flighted the 100 on the turn, then flighted the 400 when he had a second chance to raise. All of a sudden, the deuce comes out and he's betting the pot, plus he bets a nice round number with zero hesitation. I'm looking at him to see if I can pick up any kind of extra read that'll put me on one side of the fence or another. Replaying the hand in my head to try and figure out the story that he's attempting to tell. I really don't think that he has it. I think that a lot and I'm often wrong though. I should have just folded preflop. If I call and I'm wrong, I'll have lost 1500 in this hand for absolutely no reason. I feel like this is an easy fold and I'm wasting everyone's time here with second pair like a clown. Something just doesn't seem right. A full minute goes by, I go with my gut, put in a calling chip, then immediately grab my cards expecting to throw them in the muck. Instead, the opponent says my favorite thing to hear at the poker table. The button shows Queen Jack offsuit. He called twice on the turn with a gutter, didn't get there, and tried to bluff me out of my shoes. I made the call of a hero, but played the hand like a fish. I guess I'm some combination of both. I'm Aquaman. It feels great to win a $3,000 pot in a speculative, non-standard way. That doesn't happen all that often on the vlog. After getting majorly coolered, I've come back to only be stuck 100 in this 10-20 game. Still, I'm up 1400 on the day. Next time dealt pocket nines under the gun, I opened to 60. Three players call. The big blind three bets to 400. Could be a squeeze, it could be legit. I call the set mine. I'll be happy if the players behind me call. The middle position player puts in additional chips. The hijack and button fold. We're going three ways to the flop. It's king, queen, five, rainbow. Not only do we brick it, but it's a great flop for the three betters range. You can have kings, queens, aces, ace, king. I can have some of those hands too, but I obviously don't here. The big blind continues for 380. That's too much for my third pair. I fold. The middle position player folds too. The big blind is named Dark. He's a vlog watcher, and he'd show me ace, king of hearts for top, top. We play another $100 bomb pot to determine who will pay time for the table. For the first time today in one of these pots, I'm dealt a starting hand with some real potential. I've got jack nine of hearts. The flop doesn't give me any hope given that it's ace eight five with two clubs and another hundred dollars goes down the drain for me. I've lost all these in very insignificant ways. Here I've got pocket eights in middle position. I raised a 60. The big blind calls. He's the guy who boat over boated me. He switched seats since that hand and the one that I got to showdown with in which I check raised him with second pair. He might be out to get revenge on me because of that. We're heads up. The flop is ace seven five with two clubs. The big blind checks. An ace high flop doesn't seem great because we have second pair, but we need to bet for protection because we really don't want to see a 9, 10, jack, queen, or king come out on the turn. I make it 60. The big blind check raises to 180. This is another situation that feels odd. I could be up against a number of draws or bluffs that I'm beating. It's only 120 more, and I could potentially backdoor my way into a street or get a good run out to turn my hand into a bluff. I call to see what develops on future streets. The turn is the 10 of diamonds. The big blind isn't giving up. He bets 260. I'm gonna be honest, I don't 100% have a plan for this one, but I went with my gut and hero called before. It worked. I do it again here. I think there are some odd dynamics at play and I'm not completely buying what the big blind is selling. The river is the six of spades. The big blind is done trying to rep a strong hand. He's had enough and checks. I consider checking back because I at least beat hands like missed flush draws that didn't make a pair and six four. Still, I'm concerned that I could be up against an ace or maybe a hand like king 10 of clubs. I don't think that I'm up against two pair or better. I have a couple things going for me. One is that I have two eights, which means it's a lot less likely that I'll be up against nine eight. Actually, the opponent knows that I like nine eight since he saw me go out of my way to play it earlier. He also saw me bet 1.5 times the size of the pot in order to cover him when I had a boat earlier. 
It was unlucky for me that he had a better one, but it was still obviously for value. I rep 9-8 here, sliding in a stack of black chips to effectively bet about 1.5 times the size of the pot again. This time is a bluff. Could be with the best hand, but either way, I don't expect to get called very often once the opponent checks. There's no sweat for us. The player immediately folds. I have no idea what he had. All I know is that I came to play. Going with my instincts has been paying off. Later, we're dealt king deuce of clubs in the big blind. My buddy Jeff, who always buys in for piles, and you may have seen in other vlogs, opens a 60 from middle position. That's not a typo. He has 65,000 in his starting stack. The button calls. He has a pretty large stack as well. I call for 40 more. We're going three ways to the flop out of position. It's a 6 4 with two clubs. We've got a flush draw and a backdoor straight draw. I check. Jeff bets 120. The button calls. I don't especially like overcalling without the nut flush draw and being out of position. I'm not going anywhere though. I call. The turn is the jack of spades. I check. Jeff isn't one to take his foot off the pedal. He bets 760. The button isn't deterred by the overbet. He calls. I don't even know if I'm drawing to the best hand. I fold. I turn the camera off, figuring that I may not use this footage since it's not a super interesting hand. It gets interesting though. The river is the deuce of hearts. Jeff puts in $40,000 worth of 5K chips. Those chips are also known as flags since they're red, white, and blue. The button only has 8K in his stack, so the entire 40K isn't at risk. It's still a massive overbet. These are the types of tough spots that good players will put you in when you're playing higher stakes games. The button tanks for an extremely long time, as he should, since he's making a decision for an enormous amount of money. He actually tanks for so long that I get tired of filming. I set the camera down, but the button would eventually fold, and no one showed what they had. Here we have 10-9 suited in the big blind. It's seven-handed at the moment, and under the gun opens a 60. Jeff is in middle position. He three bets at 200. He three bets quite often. He doesn't necessarily have to have much. I haven't been very active pre-flop. I imagine Jeff thinks that I'm on the tighter side, especially since this vlog hasn't come out yet. He wasn't there when the 9-8 offsuit hand occurred. This could be a fun time to put in a light cold four bet and cash in on my image. Is it a good idea to do this against an early position raise and someone who has $67,000 in front of him? Probably not, but let's see what happens. 700. Seven. Oh yeah. That gets the adrenaline pumping when something like that gets through. Actually, all my bluffs have gotten through. The only big bet of mine that hasn't gotten through in the 1020 was when I actually had it. I was up against a better it. I'm still up about a thousand on the day when I get ace four suited on the button. I open to 60. Small boy needs to get me back for four betting over his open in the previous hand that we went over. He three bets to 300. I consider four betting again. He knows that I have a wide button opening range. His three bet range should be pretty wide, but this is the first time that he's three bet me this session. My hand plays well in position. I call for 240 more. We're heads up. The flop is 10-6-4 rainbow. We have bottom pair and a backdoor flush draw. Small blind bets 320. Might have all kinds of hands like suited broadways with no pair that I'm beating. I call to see if the small blind will slow down going forward or maybe I can improve. The turn is a jack. I don't like seeing that very much. The opponent bets 640. I've been sticky in some other situations today. Part of me wants to call here. I think better of it and I fold. Small blind shows me a jack of spades. I have to rush to get video of it before the dealer takes his cards away, so that's why it's a vertical view. I tell him that it was a good turn for him. He makes it sound like I was beat before that. Yeah. I mean, that's not true. No. Okay. Oh, really? After losing another bomb pot, I'm down a good chunk in 1020, but luckily we did great in 510 to start, so I'm still up on the day. It's time to call it. Played uh, four and a half hours today. I won 1500 in the 510 right away. And then I lost 1300 in the 1020 game. Got bowled over boated and I lost every $100 bomb pot every half hour. So that added up. That's probably like 700 bucks that I lost in that. Um, gonna have some explaining to do probably to Nick Petrangelo who's doing some coaching with me. Um, played some very weird hands, but uh, those actually worked out for the most part. Um, yeah, just one of these days, hopefully a cooler will go the right direction for me in uh, the 10-20 game, because last session I flopped the king high flush and then uh, someone backdoored a boat. And then this session, you guys saw what happened with the 10s. Unfortunate, all part of poker, but uh, 
at least even with losing that, I still came out with a victory and won $215 altogether. So that's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I'd appreciate it. If you hit the like and subscribe buttons, it really does help out the channel a ton. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know in the comment section and I'm happy to get back to you. Uh, this was a very unconventional session. I did some weird things, but uh, luckily I got out of there with the win. It could have been a lot worse. It's still really fun to play stakes that big. Oh, be sure to check out the next vlog that I put out. I played 2040. It's the definitely the craziest session that I've ever played in my life. And if you watch it, you'll see why I play the two biggest pots that I've ever played. So that's going to be awesome. Um, yeah, be sure to check out the description box below for information regarding upcoming meetup games at Houston, Austin, here in Las Vegas, and uh, Los Angeles. A lot of fun stuff coming up, and I uh, hope to see you guys around. You know, we can play some live cash and have some fun together. Good luck at the tables. Hope you're staying safe, and I'll see you next time.